Hey everybody, Animal Man here. Today I'm going to talk about how to prepare for a winter power outage. Stay with us. So, here's my generator, I'm the generator's doghouse. Uh, power went out overnight. I think it probably went out about 7 in the morning. It's around 11 now, I think, and four hours in the beginning of an outage is the most that I want to go, the longest I want to go without power. So I've come out here, show a little walk away from the back door to my generator, doghouse, and getting ready to hook this up to the house, get some heat in there. And uh, the main reason right now in the beginning, in the first three days of an outage, that I want the generator is to keep my reptile room warm. I have an animal business. I go to like nursing homes and schools and libraries with the animals. And anybody who knows reptiles, if you've had them, you know they have to stay warm. So I've got to keep that room heated up. I also have a newborn baby, a two-week-old son in the house. Got to keep him and his mama warm. Um, and also this is to charge our phones for some lighting and stuff like that. So I'm going to be running several space heaters off of this. Let's get this out. I'll show it to you. This is a 7,000 watt generator. And the ground's not even, so I balance it on a bucket when I'm going to gas it up or put oil in or anything like that. So. Here it is, and what I do is I have a transfer panel in the house, built into the house that I had installed that I hook it up to. So this is just outside the back door, and this is a, a plug-in to a transfer panel. So I start the generator up, once it's going without any load on it, once it's going good and warmed up, then you plug this into the panel. So this right here, is the transfer panel, guys, next to my normal panel. I'm used to doing this with one hand. And this is what it does. Basically, you've got this rocker switch. How it's set now, you see it says house. When that's up, you're getting power from the grid. And then when you seesaw it, like that, you get power to the generator. And this is only for certain circuits. This does my well pump, does not do the water heater because that uh, is a lot, needs a lot of power. So this is the well. And then these circuits here are all just normal 110 outlets that can do all the heating and lighting in my reptile room because there's no built-in heater. It's, it's just a space heater in the winter I use in there. So it can do the whole reptile room and uh, it can do the upstairs fridges and lights and the bathroom lights. And, um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So I need to run extension cords throughout the house to make sure the fridges and freezers are switched over and um, run extension cords to put space heaters where I need them in, in the house. But this has worked very, very well. And um, I like it. That's all we really need uh, to keep everything nice and nice and warm for short, short term, short term. So I've got it switched over for the generator. Close that up. Now here's one of the windows in the back of the house. I'm showing you this because if you do not have a transfer panel with a transfer switch like I have, and I know most people don't, I recommend you get one. If you don't have one, what I would do is I'd run the electrical cords in a back window, not a ground floor window like this, an upstairs window. Do an upstairs window. That's for security. And um, what you would do is, you don't want to leave the window cracked, so you can take egg crate foam or towels, washcloths, whatever you have, and leave a little spot for the cord to go through, and then put, you know, like washcloth rolled up, and then towels rolled up, and just to block the draft, and then close the window. Oh, there's snow falling off everywhere. And that's what I would do to make sure no cold air goes in. I would not run it in a door. Also, um, run the cord down, drop it down from inside the house. Don't try to throw it up to the window and have someone catch it or try to like, you know, get a hole in one there and just toss it right in the window. Just go upstairs, unravel the cord, drop it down. Be smart, do it all in one shot, nice and fast. And, uh, and that's how I would run, run things. You can even do that in several places. You can have one, you know, one cord going in. The upstairs, you could also, if you wanted to, you can do it on, on the bottom level of the house. But I would then, if you're going to do that, I would plan to have pieces of 2x3 cut to jam inside the window up in here on each side to make sure that this can't be shimmied open. Or you could even have those metal little brackets that screw in, like when people put air conditioners in the window. That'll keep it shut for you too. 
just in a pinch. Not the most secure thing in the world, but it's better than nothing for sure. So this snow, guys, is just so wet. That's my internet cable hanging down there, probably about five feet off the ground. That's gonna be its own separate problem once power comes on, trying to get the internet back. And uh, yes, I have a pirate ship in the front of my house. Built that myself for my boy. But this wind and the wet, wet snow, I mean, the trees are just groaning and their branches broken down all over the place. It's just, this is the kind of snow that causes some real problems, the wet, heavy snow that, that really tests the trees. You can see it's still coating. I mean, it's starting to come off because the snow is uh, slowed down and it's getting kind of sunny out, but the wind and the snow, man, it's no good. All right, guys. So this does have a pull starter. Never had to use it before. I rely on this battery with the Ormac starter. If you have one of these, make sure the battery is charged um, a few times a year. Take it, get a uh, get a smart charger, not a triple charger. Get a smart charger, like I use for my battery bank inside, and use that to charge this battery up. Make sure it's ready to go for you when you need it. Because uh, in the winter, when power's out, it's no time to be messing around. And all I do is switch it on. Now everything is on in the reptile room, everyone looks happy. So this will work the space heater here, all of the lights on timers and the, uh, the heaters, the heating pads rather. So you can hear the generator in the background, I'm back inside the house, I'm in the back room that I call the slop sink room. This is the room where my water heater and pressure tank and water softener system and all that stuff is. And um, I don't know if I said this before or not, I think I might have touched on it. I run, in the beginning, first three days of an outage, I run the generator for an hour on, three hours off. And that's enough to keep everybody warm and happy, keep everything charged and whatnot. And I pretty much do that around the clock. That's for the first three days. Um, and it uses a lot of gas, no big deal at first. And I have a lot of gas stored here, I'm not telling you how much. but. First three days. After that, I've decided in my own head, after you know the first three days, that's when I make the conscious decision to switch over to, to kind of conserve resources. And at that point, I run the generator for one hour twice a day. That's it. So twice a day, one hour, that's enough to keep this battery bank charged. And what this battery bank will do for us, there's three uh, deep cycle marine batteries and a charger. And there's also this whole panel here that hooks up to it. Oh, I know it's hard to see in the lighting because the lights are off. But I've got a 1,000 watt inverter here. I've got four USB charging ports. Um, I've got all kinds of goodies here ready to go if I just flick a switch. And this can run lighting for us, LED lighting. Um, without charging it, it can run, depending on how many lights you hook up, it can hook it for days or weeks. And this can do phone charging, laptop charging, radios, a small um, flat screen TV, possibly for a little while, small flat screen, and then it can do heating pads. I have small 8 watt Zoomed heating pads, cost you 20 or 30 bucks. You can get them on Amazon or at the pet store or whatever. That's what I have underneath the tank of every single one of my reptiles here. Those get very, very warm and they only use eight watts of power, which is nothing. You're like sipping energy at that point. So you can give one of those heating pads to each person in the house. Um, you know, put a blanket under it, put a blanket over it, lay on it, and those can keep everybody warm. And then twice a day, you run the generator and you hook up the battery charger to the generator, charge this up, and you're good. You don't even need to do this twice a day. That's just to keep it topped off just in case. That's just to be paranoid. But so that's what I have. You can do a simple, small, cheap one of these just with a small charger. Um, this right here is my backup charger. This is my original charger. I know it's very, very hard to see, but it's a, uh, it's a Schumacher speed charge up to 12 amp. And the important thing is it's a smart charge, not a trickle charger. But if you have one battery, something like this, 
get this on Amazon for 30 bucks, charge up that battery, get a cheap inverter, and you can run all kinds of stuff just off an inverter. If you had to, you can run things off your car. That's another backup. Make sure your cars are gassed up before a storm happens. If your car is a $30,000 generator, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, at idle, if you idle that car, if, you're, if your gas tank, say, takes 15 gallons of gas, you idle that car for one hour twice a day, my car at idle uses one quarter gallon per hour. So if you do it for an hour twice a day, that car will last you a month keeping this charged. I forgot to mention too, aside from the heating pads, after three days in an outage, my other plan is right there. Got a wood stove, and this house also has two fireplaces. I don't like using the fireplaces because they're not efficient, but if you have two fireplaces and a wood stove going, and you have, uh, sorry about that, and you have like the heating pads, you guys will be fine. That should be enough to keep the uh, pipes from freezing especially if you're going to run the generator for an hour twice a day to run a few space heaters where the water pipes are and, and such. So, hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know what you do for your power outage, uh, especially in the winter. It's a very, very interesting subject. I love to learn what other people do, and uh, hope you guys found this useful. Take it easy. Uh, back to work.